family did I am not the voices in my head I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside I am light
and allow us to make decisions of how to become women who are priestess of our own household. Um, and, and that's just a beautiful thing because the woman is naturally that anyway. And so uh, this morning, I just want to ask you, what do you do when you have it all? What What do you do when you have it all? You have um, the money, you have the car, you have the house. You have the children, you have the job, you have the assignment that you uh, are happy with in your career. You, What do you do when you go to your closet and your closet has it all? Do you, do you, do you purge out the closet yearly and give away certain clothes? Or what's your style? Do you hold on and you need to have more, 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 more of this and more of that, a bigger this or a bigger that? And and do you do you get what it is that you desire? And then all of a sudden you realize that's not what I really wanted. Everybody has a style when it comes to having this, and and oftentimes we're not honest with ourselves about our having this. You know there are people who have grown up and had nothing. But the truth of the matter is in this community that that is far and few between. Many of us have been comfortable most of our lives. Some of us outright spoiled, a uh, silver spoon in our mouth. We we were born of parents who worked very hard and their motto was they were they were working hard so that we wouldn't have to and and then we take on the motto of whatever whatever we inherited and and take it to the next extreme so what do you pass on when you have everything when your children are given everything what what is the breakdown sometimes between this thing called work ethic um and wealth because Wealthy children oftentimes have everything, and that is their normal. And they don't. And they're, they're, um, some grow on and go on to be entitled. Some understand that there are people who are less fortunate than them, and and dedicate their lives to causes. Um, some just continue the legacy of whatever it is they inherited. And and if we don't come from that place. Oftentimes, the people who are wanting more and who uh, who uh, pontificate uh, as though they have more is oftentimes the one who's in credit card debt or, you know, we like to dress up and then we go home to the reality or, you know, that's in the mailbox or what, what it, whatever it takes. So what is driving us when we are on this quest to get more, have more, do more. And 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 it's a very interesting position to to consider because um the being in a minimalist lifestyle, meaning I I live with and what I need, only what I need, and when I need it, I get more. That's 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 rare to to many people in the Western Hemisphere in the United States, and then you know because then you really have to look at well don't do I have what I need why do I need this why have I why did I invest in that type of thing and I ask that question because when we look at the law of action. Most of us in this community are not inactive people. We are women who have uh, been high performers, who've gone for what it is that we wanted, and oftentimes have been exhausted because of uh, a lot of a lot of black women have had definitely taken the position of how to be strong. You know, the being of the strong, martyring black woman has definitely been overrated. And then there are those who of us uh, sometimes where we haven't really had to do that. We've been taken care of. There may have been an early marriage or uh, looking for your knight in shining armor to rescue you and to be your provision and your security. And so less has been required of thee to necessarily have to perform in the world. You know, there's a difference between a woman who chooses to perform in the world and who is born to perform in the world. There's a difference of a woman who's been kept 
and hasn't had to 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 uh, perform in the world. And sometimes there's a conflict inside when you are performing in the world, but yet you want to be kept. And the one who doesn't, who's tired of being kept and really doesn't know, is afraid to actually perform. But these are all conversations oftentimes that are hidden when it comes to the law of action. Because when you think of the law of action, there's an activation that has to happen inside to go for anything that that it is that you want to bring into manifestation. And of course, we deal a lot with mindset. You know, the 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 mindset to be able to even get into agreement with words self-worth, deservingness, to have what it is you envision or what it is you desire. There, you know, there, there. We deal with that quite a bit of the mindset, and then there are those who may have to deal with the idea of letting go of being attached to the external validation of things. And I don't know whose alley I'm walking down. And this is why I'm using all of these different scenarios in this space today. Because when we start looking at actions, it's important to con- to consider that this thing called comparison, because you certainly do not want to be looking at an action that you need to take only based off of what someone else did to get it. I just want to pause right there, because many of us inherit ways of being, ways of acquiring things. Some things are spoken, some things are not. And so many of us are operating off of outdated programs that no longer serve us even mentally, spiritually, or emotionally. Uh, What do you do when you take an action so far outside of your comfort zone or what you know that, quote, unquote, what you've been taught to believe pleases God? And then what usually there's a conversation of guilt, of shame, of regret, uh, there, there are many actions that women have taken sometimes with their bodies, um, with, with, with uh, decisions, with their sexuality, um, or results of their sexuality. Their decisions sometimes women have had to take to, to survive and take care of their, their children that sometimes does not really serve the truth of, of what it is that you really want, but you know, when have we had conversations sometimes with the elders? Have we talked to the elders who who show up one way, but underneath there's something going on? Because you may have been judging the actions that you need to take, want to take, based off of someone who took care of you, raised you, and now you're operating on an automatic program that's interfering in the next most appropriate step. What is the next most appropriate step for you today in this season of your life? What makes the butterflies come in your stomach? What is the thing that causes the pee to run down your leg just a little bit, even when you think about doing it. Where have you been holding yourself hostage to, I'm doing it for the children? Of course, all of us need to consider a legacy because many of us have not inherited legacies that allow us to uh, receive the benefit of of any type of wealth, land, or investment, many of us have received a, a, a legacy of struggle, of strain, of living paycheck to paycheck. And that has become the normal. And what is the life? Who do you have to be to create a new normal that creates a new legacy? Mind, body, or spirit, who do you have to be? Even if you are the woman who has had it all or the woman who came up from a a family of struggle, abject poverty, who do you have to be? 
because this sounds a little bit like a workshop this morning because I hope you're considering writing down some of these questions because it's easy to get really comfortable. It's easy to look at what other people are doing and start borrowing and imitating. And, yes, imitation is the highest form of flattery when you've been inspired by someone or even influenced in leadership by someone. I'm sure that there are times when I sound very much like my spiritual mother, and I have spiritual fathers, and that you will see the, 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 the influence uh, of them in my life and the elders and the master teachers who have taught me. Absolutely. However, there is a place where you continue to move in the direction of your soul's cry, your soul's longing, your destiny, where you put your signature on it. And if you are in a situation where you feel like you can't put your signature on it, then you must look at how and how you may have been infantized in your relationship with your own authority. I ask this question because I started off on reverse engineering it, as they call it, in uh, backwards mapping in education. You all know that um, I started this this journey with the intention to to uh, teach school while I went to law school and spiritual. My spiritual destiny kicked in, and so I ended up just becoming a, a, not only a teacher, but a teacher of spiritual law, not just man's law. Even though man's law holds a great deal of metaphysics inside of it, but I started this discussion in my backwards mapping of sharing with you from Matthew, and Matthew talks about uh, the let me let me double check this: the tree being known by the fruit that it bears. Um, and it asks the question, ye shall know them by their fruit. fruit. Excuse me. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down. Now, normally I don't read King James versions because the bring it, the this, the ye this and the ye that. Sometimes our mind needs to hear it in plain language. But I I, I was drawn uh, to this, and I said, well, you know, just to demonstrate the metaphysical superpower is being able to know who is the, the context of the writer, because you know Matthew was a tax collector. That means his mind thought in a certain kind of way. If those of you who have mathematical minds, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't ever want to deal with math, what you really are pushing away a lot of times is the reality of the numbers and of your relationship with money. And so sometimes the feminine has to look at what the next most appropriate step is to get in touch with the thing that you deny yourself saying that you're not good at. In other words, if you uh, have been not good with money management and you want someone else to do it, then oftentimes that is a, a ev- a evidence of, the, of your stretch, of a growth area, of the learning line. So Matthew became a disciple, but he was already uh, a tax collector in his earthly identity, and then his spiritual identity became a disciple, uh, which which represents a discipleship. So his discipleship is the will, the governing of the will, which connects with the law of action because you cannot take action if your will has been weakened. And this is why sometimes we don't really trust our own word, our own voice to be able to declare, to decree decree our amen or our ouch, because oftentimes our will has been broken by something because or, or needs to be strengthened because we don't sometimes have the will to speak the truth of what it is that we have been experiencing or desire for that matter. It also is, it, it directs, it disciplines the other faculties of the mind. And so Matthew actually 
um, had money. He had a good relationship with money. He willingly gave it up to move into this thing called Christ consciousness. And so this is important to understand who the speaker is because the will always enters into a man or a woman's decision. The will makes up the final choice. In other words, this is what, what, what Matthew represents, this final choice. Should I go with, with Jesus the man uh, or should I stay? Because sometimes we're going to reach a crossroads in the law of action where old ideas and conditions must be surrendered in order for us to create some good fruit, some different fruit, a, a fruit being something that nourishes us, fruit representing, representing abundance, fruit also representing the feminine, fruit also representing this essence of something sweet. Okay, now that's when I start to get into all of the meanings and the motivations of juicy. Because this is where we get to experience and taste our own juicy living in our lives. It gets really juicy when you start to feed your will. Now, many of us have been talked about taught how to feed our faith. But then the scripture says faith without works is dead. And so we have been oftentimes a people of much faith. That's how many of us lost. Uh, If we study the history, you know, they said they gave us a Bible and we gave them our land. We got hoodwinked and tricked by by many colonizers um, who came knowing that we are natural people of faith. Uh, And so many of us have had so much faith but very little work because and and we yes we lab, labored uh, for other people but what happens when you feed the will to overcome a certain level of mindset and conditions that you that we have inherited that's what we've been talking about today I'm re- reverse mapping this thing cuz sometimes it may seem like it's just motivational hype but we oftentimes have have fresh word that that feeds us even in the metaphysical, and the metaphysical always goes to the mind and the representations and the codes. And then when you start to be able to crack the codes of faith, then you are able to crack the codes of your yourself, your own mindset, your own legacy, and the next most appropriate action that is required. What does your yes require? I don't want to start teaching on yes because y'all know that's a familiar thing for us, but the yes is one of those things that's living. Is your yes to yourself and the things that you said you desired alive, or is it on life support, or has it dead been dead? Well, you get to decide whether you are ready to resurrect it. Something is required of thee. The new thing that we are looking to rebirth, when you've had it all, what is required of thee now? Because you can have things and not have yourself. Or what is required of of thee if you have it all and you are being called to be of greater service to humanity? Time for us to elevate even how we think about action beyond survival beyond acquisition of things to be definitions of ourselves because sometimes we need to reverse map it and to and to 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 go and to let, see where do we get the pressure that we put on ourselves the judgments that we make sometimes or the thing that continues to interrupt us from being the body size or our relationship with food, our our relationship with men, our relationship with women, our relationship with the world, our relationship with work, our relationship with money. Is it something that's required of thee to have a new relationship? A lot of questions today, and so I want to to take this opportunity to um, allow you to share what you may have heard, what what the what you are declaring, what you are decreeing for yourself uh, today. Well, actually, something is going on with the board, and I don't even see how I can 
Like voila, one minute I could see it, and the next minute I can't, could not, cannot see the. Oh wait, there we go. I can see it again. So I'm going to take um, our, you all, my co-host, off mute. If there's something that you heard this morning, then make sure belly beat. When I say something about the belly beat, for those who are here for the first time, I'm talking about the Mary and the Elizabeth relationship that happens when your sister is pregnant and so are you with something. And it's something that when you come into each other's presence, there's a, there's a leap that happens from what you hear to come to. And so if you have any background noise or suffering, go ahead and put yourself on mute since I'm taking up all the calls on me. Who would like to share something that may be in your week this morning? Good morning, Latanya. I'm jumping on here real quick because I'm on my way to the assignment. But uh, I thank, I appreciate you this morning for what you said about the will and even taking you higher because I've been feeling that in my spirit for the past two days. And um, I need to go higher. You know, God has called me to do more service. I'm out here working for these artists, and, and I'm, God's like, what are you doing more for you and for serving the community? So I thank you for this word this morning. I'm on the way to the Redskins game to cover them. But uh, you was right on time. So I thank you for your word this morning. I say thank you, sister, for sharing and jumping on with us. All right. Y'all be blessed. All right. See you soon. Love you. Love you, too. All right. Who's next? Anyone else? You had a belly leap this morning. Do you feel called to something that scares you a little bit? Or you had there's a next most appropriate step that is that's being you being called to. Oh, we got a shy bunch this morning. Good morning. Is that what's going on? Good morning. Okay, I'm sorry. I was talking with my own mute button on. Um, I um this 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 word is definitely um a right on time word and it's certainly been consistent in, in what's been building and shifting in my own life. Um I can remember I made a, a conscious shift in my twenties with conjurers. Um, whatever they spoke they created, my mother and my father both. But I remember when I was younger, because of my religious um uh teachings I would look at my father and be like, you know, he's conjuring all these things, but he drinks, you know, he smokes, he's not a Christian. So all of the material things that he manifested, I um, looked at them as being, you know, of evil, right? Then there was this shift that came in my 20s when I began to study the word for myself and understood, you know, in a greater, in a greater place what those manifestations really meant. Um, my judgment about him began to change, and he became one of my greatest teachers when it came to come to manifestation. So that was pretty consistent, and I was a, and I've been all my life been able to manifest um, um, things, but to a limit. It was like you know, yeah, you know, you get a home, you get a car, you know, your children are this and this, but there's always been a calling for me for greater. And when I mean greater, I mean above and beyond what I could ever imagine for myself. A couple of months ago, I had a thought to come to me that I know that was divine, which said, I want you to research what is the, what is the, what's the top accounting firm or accounting uh, uh, agency in the world. So I parlayed, put it on the back burner, didn't do it, just let life go on. And, um, but the reason that I was given that thought was because how can you prepare for greater when you're not preparing for greater, getting ready to get ready, to get ready, to get ready. So mm-hmm. just recently, mm-hmm. just recently I did, I, I stopped where I was one morning after my, after my ritual and I just Googled what's the top, what's the top accounting firm in the world? Cause if I'm expecting millions, then I want to be represented by, you know, a company that is reputable. The company that I pulled, the, the, the name that came up was Deloitte, 
Now, here's, here's the, I can't make this shit up. Mm-hmm. I am currently right now managing a $153 million contract that my contractor is Deloitte. Mm-hmm. I'm already mm-hmm. working with this this this, mm-hmm. this 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 accounting firm. And when I tell you that almost made me literally piss on myself, Latanya, because I I know what this means the evidence of things not seen. I know what this means. And it was more of a confirmation that I'm getting ready to get ready to get ready. And you know what else it did? It helped to it helped to chip away some of the fear associated with me being associated with that much money. Because I had separated like that's their money that they're managing. But this was this was a, a, a an opportunity as a student to manage this so that when I'm ready, because I'm getting ready to get ready, to get ready. Mm-mm-mm. And wow. I'm, 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 I'm getting ready. When I, when I tell you I can't, I can't begin to express in words what, that, how that shifted me. Words like luxury you know, uh, uh, what is it, optimism, things that I've had a secret desire for, but I still have remnants of, you know, well, your mother, yeah, she's a conjurer, but she, you know, she served people, she was modest, da-da-da, you know, your father, he was this and that. So when I, bring, when I reminded myself of that shift in my 20s that led me to a greater shift, I realized that was, that I had unconsciously, subconsciously gone back to that questioning of whether or not I, myself, could rewrite a whole story for myself where abundance looks even greater than I could ever imagine. Wow. wow. So that's, that's where I am. And I thank you for this right here, this right here, because it's, uh, everything that we've been doing this, this, this year has been a building of where my abundance and wealth is taking me. Mm-hmm. So I thank you. Oh wow, that's that's there's that's so rich that share. I don't know if y'all got chills, but I did. Um, because sometimes we are really already in proximity to the to the thing and the desire, the destiny, um, and we don't even know it. But sometimes when your head is buried down and you're only focused on the next bill or just maintaining, you can't see that yes. there's so much already around mm-hmm. you. Sometimes mm-hmm. our issues of the heart even will slide off and be able to see that there are already people who love us, there are already people who see us, but sometimes the mind will have you focus on what's not there and the getting and filling in the gap, and yep. you miss what's yep. already there Ready? around your yes. destiny and your desire. Yes. Oh, my God, that's yes. so good. Yes. Thank yes. you for sharing this morning. Thank you. Thank you for the space to share. All right. Is there anyone else who had a belly leak this morning that wants to share something you heard or felt a little nervous when you just started thinking about that desire in your heart? Good morning, this is Catherine. Good morning. Um, so what how this resonates with me is, you know, oftentimes, you know, we talk about our calling or, or what comes to our spirit or what universe sends to us. And I know for me sometimes when I am, you know, sent a project or, you know, something to work on, like for example, I'm in the middle of working on um putting together a film screening and panel discussion for a friend in D.C. And even in the midst of that, you know, I'm excited about doing it. I'm planning it. But sometimes I find, like, that um, negative chatter comes in my head in terms of, like, who do you think you are, like, to be planning this? Like, (laughs) and and it's just weird. And so I have to 
find myself, um, you know, getting caught up in that or not allowing it to um, to interrupt, you know, what I'm doing and, and be a distraction. And, um, and I have to keep, you know, reminding myself of that with different things that I'm doing or different things that I'm thinking of doing because it becomes a, a conversation of, worthy or am I capable Um, and knowing that I am but it's just that that negative chatter that comes into play and so um, but what I try to also do is remind myself about Marion Williamson's um, A Return to Love and you know how she starts it off with you know our deepest fear is, is not that we are adequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, we are not to be. We are a child of God. And so I keep, you know, having to remind myself. And so I thank you for this call today to keep presencing uh, me and, and all of us in terms of, you know, where are we being guided and being obedient to that in terms of our passion and purpose and contribution. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that as well. Because, you, you you know, you're right. You can absolutely already be doing something and, you, and it's like pinching yourself. You all certainly must know that every day that I'm doing, doing Fix My Life, I definitely am like pinching myself and things that I'm, I'm, I'm shocked and that, that I'm, do, I'm doing, like, production and stuff like that. I didn't know I could do it. And and when I said that out loud to my husband and some friends, they were like, uh, we we could see you doing it. We see you doing more than this. Like, are you kidding, Latanya? And I'm like, no, but so you the so my lesson is you want to be around people who can see you bigger than what you are and that you they're not intimidated by your bigness. So when the thought comes in about your smallness that you that it can't even live because you are around people who see you big already and they're not intimidated by it because the reverse is also true. You can also be around people who who um, are uncomfortable with your bigness and your big energy and your big brilliance and your big whatever, and, and even if, if it's your body. And some of us sometimes have gained weight because we're, we, wanna, we want to be seen or cover on one thing, but there's healthier ways to be able to even do that. I know being almost six feet tall, you know, it took me a while to be able to really move into that. People would automatically think one thing because you show up so big. Sometimes that's not always so great, but then they don't know what you're feeling on the inside. Or sometimes people will think you don't need a certain thing because you show up big or you, whatever the case may be. And so this is also why being in tribe is really, really good for us and being able to have a safe space to share our, our vision and sometimes our fears about the vision or the destiny um, so that the vulnerability can create more space for um, conjuring the next most appropriate thought, the next most appropriate word, or the next most appropriate agreement that we need to get into with ourselves in order to move to the, to the next most appropriate action. So, Thank you all for sharing. Um, we're going to move into the space of prayer uh, this morning. Um, I do want us to just take a few breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. And just think about the prayers of someone who prayed for you. They prayed for you. That's on the other side. They prayed for your mother, your father. Somebody prayed for you when you didn't have the strength or when before you even knew what prayer was. Oftentimes that's a grandmother, an elder, but we know that sometimes our ancestors who know our name, the angels who know our name aren't necessarily old. 
There are friends that we've walked with on this planet who are our angels. Then bring them to the, to mind. Tracy Clinton, mm-hmm. we can begin speaking their name into this space. We can, this morning we can do male or female. Tracy Richardson. Dennis Taylor. Dennis Taylor. Carrie Jackson. Gertrude Richardson. Willie Bush. Bertha. May Bush. Jean. Lauren. Mary, um, Mary Jean, how about Benny? That's how we should just in case. All the names Bellamy. of the mothers and Bibles from the Middle Passage, names of which we do not know. Never seen the God of Holy Spirit, all of it is the allness of our eachness. We connect with that essence of the divinity that lives within us, around us, through us. My prayer this morning, Holy Spirit, that is me, as me, through me, that I am consciousness that is operating at all times. My prayer is that we will get into agreement with the truth of who we are and the desires of our heart. And that those places where we have disagreed and been disagreeable, with the truth of of those desires, that we will come into alignment and congruency. That those things that show up as sabotage, those ideas, those concepts, and those conditions that show up as interruptions to our own havingness, help us, Holy Spirit, to move out of our own way. Let us go forth and prosper in the land like many of those who we have we read to be encouraged by. Help us to write the New Testament for our own lives, that we will be a testimony. Help us, Holy Spirit, to elevate our living such that we leave legacies, not of struggle, pain, and strife, question marks, and worry, but we can leave a legacy that shows some answers, has some arrows that can be elevated into wealth, wealth consciousness, wealthy mindset, and whatever is necessary for us to to keep living, keep alive a healthy state of mind and a healthy state of being. We pray, Holy Spirit, for communities that have inherited poverty and, and those who have been in struggle and strife. For we thank you for the sacrifices of many of those names that we have called, some of the names of our mothers and grandmothers and ancestors that we do not know. We thank you that there is a place beyond the middle passage, beyond the struggle, beyond the the the, the slave narrative. Help us, Holy Spirit, for in our communities where the slave narrative still lives. Help us, Holy Spirit, where there's a co- any of us who have been attached to a colonized mind. Help us to surrender our colonized mind and to remember the 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 generations that sat in the dynasties of the royal court that operated in communication with nature that was able to telepathically communicate long before there were iPhones and computers. We thank you that we we are an inheritance of a mighty people. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for those reminders who have come, who have gone, and that we will be one of those. We thank you that our families and friends will know our works by the fruit that we bear. I pray that those of us who, that that some trees that are meant to bear fruit and some trees that are meant to bear shade, that we will be okay with our assignment, that we will come into agreement with our assignment here at this time and in this season, not comparing, not worrying or feeling left out or that anything is missing, that we will rise to the occasion to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Let those streams come to us easily and effortlessly. Let our roots be nourished and that we will be able to find our place in the firmness of the permanent. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that we will not waver backwards and forwards, if, then, and maybe, 
that we can stand on our own word and that we can find the power to declare it to be and that we let it be. And so it shall be. And I thank you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations in my heart be acceptable. Let the words that I've spoken uh, not return to me void and that they will accomplish that which I have sent them forth to do for myself Mm -hmm. and for my sisterhood. And that Mm -hmm. this and so and so it is. I share. And so it is. I share. Yay, Bo. Amen. <laughs> Yay, Bo. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a wonderful Sunday. Please come into Good Girls and Goddess and share if there's anything that you have heard. And I look forward to uh, doing more work together on the other side. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. Thanks. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Love you back. I love you. I'm sure you probably got to go to the bathroom. I'm sure you probably got to go to the bathroom. I was trying not to wake you up. I was trying not to wake you up. Thank you.